God is a miracle working God and we believe that he wants to work a miracle in your situation today. He's an amazing God. He's going to do something amazing today, amazing for you. I'm Tom Hollis. I'm here with Amanda Brocker and this is Hope Today. Amanda, we've got a guest that's seen some of those amazing things. We do. We have Becky Dvorak. You are not going to want to miss this interview. She has been used by God to lay hands on the sick and see them recover, even the dead to rise. So all that and so much more coming up. Don't tune away. Maybe call someone and tell them tune in to Hope Today. Well, you know, God, God is a miracle working God. I, yes, I love yes. that. I, I heard someone say one time, God is an amazing God and he's going to do something consistent with his character. And so we're believing for that for you today in whatever situation you find yourself. Right now, I hope he does something amazing when we play Stump the Host. All right, it's called Stump the Host because we don't know all the answers. We don't know any of the answers. We don't know any of the questions. So please play along with us and we'll all see if we can do this together. You ready, Amanda? Yes. Okay, here we go. Here's the first one. Who pretended to be mad to avoid capture and death at the hands of an enemy king? This was David. Okay. By Matt. Yeah. The, Yes, it was David, and that's our final answer. Good yes, God. yes, yes. Okay, all right. Yeah, he was. It was the Philistines, and he 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 pretended like he was was crazy, and uh, and the, the Philistine king was. Don't I have enough mad men around here? Get him out of here! And so he escaped. <laughs> all right. Question number two. Finish this proverb. Labor not to be. Oh my lanta. <laughs> Dead silence on the Labor air. What, what, what we want. Labor not to be. <laughs> Labor not to be. Labor not to be. Wow, this has got to be King James. Labor uh, not to be yeah. lazy. Labor not to be. I am totally stumped, stumped. at this one. The hosts <laughs> are stumped. We don't have an answer. Do you have an answer? Labor not to be lazy. <laughs> Labor not I to be know. lazy. Oh, what was this? Labor rich. Labor not to be rich. Proverbs 23, 4. When have I read that? Well, we've probably both labored pretty well not to be, <laughs> not to be rich in our lives. Oh. All right, well, let's go to the next one. What does the name Barnabas mean? Barnabas Encourager? Means son, I think it means son of encouragement. There we go. Uh, let's go with son of encouragement. <laughs> Yay, all right, we'll, all take, right, two we'll take two three. out of three. Thank you for playing <laughs> along with us. We love that. We love showing how much we don't know here on Hope Today. That's right. <laughs> Labor not to be rich. We got it now. There you go. All right. Well, are you or a loved one discouraged by sickness in your life? Does it seem like your prayers for healing go unheard? Well, our next guest says it doesn't have to be this way. Becky Dvorak is a prophetic healing evangelist and author, and her new book is called Decrees That Heal. Becky, welcome to Hope Today. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Well, first of all, I just I would love to hear what your salvation experience looks like, and then if you could dive into um, the purpose for writing this book. Well, I got born again back in May of 1979, and I didn't know I was going to be. And I got off a four-hour bus ride, and some Christian friends met me. I was very worldly at the time. And when I got off the bus, um, my friend and her friends, her Christian friends, were all there. And they said, hey, you want to go to this concert? And then I'm like going... Um, well, you know, I didn't know where I was and anything. And, and in my head, I'm thinking sarcastically, well, sure, sure. <laughs> and I didn't know where I was going. And it ended up being where I got born again. It was at Jesus People Church. And it was at a, con it was at a concert about the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which I never heard of anything like that before. Not at all. <laughs> and, um, and then when they came to give the altar call, you know, for salvation, I stood up and the person that brought me was trying to, was tugging on my sleeve and saying, what are you doing? What are you doing? And, and I'm just totally confused about her and, and, and I'm having to go like this, you know, with her hand, you know, let me go. 
And um, I just looked at her and I said, I don't know what these people are talking about, but whatever it is, it's what I want and it's what I need. It's what I've been looking for. And so I went in front of like 10,000 people and gave my life to Jesus. And then they asked me if I wanted to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And that just went whoop, right over my head. And, and, you know, because even though that concert was all about that, I was spiritually dead during that concert. And so the word of God didn't make sense to me, obviously. But, you know, and, and anyway, the person that was praying with me was very gracious. And he, and he asked me, he said, do you want the baptism of the Holy Spirit? And I said, sure. And I didn't know, even know what I was even saying yes to. And, and he laid his hands on me, you know, for the baptism. And he said, open up your mouth and speak. And I was 18 years old at the time. And I had my hand over my mouth. And I said, if I, I said, I can't. He goes, yeah, you can. I said, no, I can't. If I do, I'm going to sound like a baby. And he's like going, no, you won't. And you have to understand, I never, ever heard of tongues. I never heard one person speak in tongues before. I, I, and it wasn't like I was even speaking yet. It was just coming. There was just something in me. And it was like, oh, my goodness. And then he says, no, he was very gracious with me. Praise the Lord. And, and he said, just speak. And I did. And I couldn't stop praying in the Holy Spirit for four days. What an encounter. So you were definitely from that moment on a divine assignment and paint for us because you were in other countries eventually like and just the word of God literally became real to you. And that is so precious. But give, take us along on your journey a little bit. Well, from there, um, a few years later, I was married and then had three children and then, you know, going up you know, when they were teens, pre-teens, um, my husband and I moved down to Guatemala and make a long story short, we raised up a children's home there and we were ministering in churches and that. And it was with the, with the children's home because God was bringing in all these very sick, sick children, children that were just, they were not supposed to survive two weeks. Mm. Um, some were born with HIV, um, and, and they were in the last stage AIDS and, and others were just had so many things wrong with them and others came, you know, off the streets from the, they, they were always legal in that, you know, through the courts, but anyway, they came very, very sick to us and, and a lot of demonic activity, notable activity was going on in their lives because we took them of all ages, not just babies. We had, we started out with kids right off the streets and so there were a lot of issues but it was there where God taught me how to heal the sick and raise the dead and and it has been an amazing adventure and and then from there he started just telling me you're going here you're going there and I was like okay okay and, <laughs> and that's that's it in a short little story amen well it is a powerful one to say the least but um, I just, you know, we're going to come to your book, but it is chocked full of the scripture of God. Like these prayers that you did, it's basically topical. So you can look up the ailment that you're dealing with and then you give a confession of faith and you give a prayer of faith and it is just loaded with God's word is what it is. But you've laid it out for us beautifully. But I'm just thinking about, you know, it's not so much like um, that this book has any magic to it that like you're going to get this book and then you're going to get your healing. How important is it for us to truly understand the word of God? Because you went through a process and you learned God takes us all in processes to learn how to understand his word. Well, I think it's very important to understand what the word of God says in Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. The Lord says, by his stripes we are healed and in and this is my seventh book. And in one of my other books, I teach people about Isaiah 53, 4 and 5 and, 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 and how that verse proves to us that he heals spiritually so our sins are forgiven, that, that um, we're healed in our mind and our emotions, and that he also heals physically. It's all right there. Mm -hmm. and, and I take people through this book about lies that people are taught um, 
from, I'm just going to be honest, from the religious community. I'm not a fan of religion. I'm a fan of relationship with Jesus. Um, that's what makes the difference. But I totally believe that it's God's will to heal all people, all times of all situations. There isn't anyone that can tell me that God does not heal today, that healing is not for today. Um, I have seen, I have witnessed too much. And I know sometimes people struggle, you know, they, you know, they pray for this person and that person. They see these healings in other people's lives. But when it comes to their body, their own bodies, it doesn't happen. And they're like, why, why? And I totally believe we have to go back to scripture. Everything is in scripture. The answer is always there. And because God is not withholding what he already gave to us. He's not going to do that. He and, and he's not a madman. He's not a monster. He doesn't put sickness and disease on you. And he never and he never withdrew the healing promises in his word from the blood covenant. That's you know that's all religious jargon. And and, and I just don't you know right. why would someone not get healed? Possibly there's a lot of reasons, but I think the main reasons is. The words that we speak, you know, sometimes people say, well, you know, healing happens in Guatemala, Central America, it happens in South America, it happens in Africa and all that, you know, it always happens there because they're so needy. And it's like, I think everybody's needy. I think everybody's needy for the Lord and for a healing touch from the Lord. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I I believe we put our faith in the wrong things. I I like to challenge people with questions so that they search out their own heart. What is really going on in the inside of you? And and I think one of the main things that that trip us up is our words. We we don't speak words of faith on a consistent basis. And along with that, you know, when you know when when you say, well, I can pray for this person, I see their healing, but when it comes to me, it's a whole totally different story. Well, we learn about this from Abraham and Sarah and how they had to overcome human reasoning and the five senses. And those are very powerful things in, in, in our lives. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and so we always have to we have to choose to believe in every situation. We have to choose to speak right words. We have to choose to ignore the the negative symptoms that our body is screaming at us or whatever. And, and we have to choose to believe what Jesus did for us. We have to choose to believe that is the power of his blood that he shed for us for our healing is greater than the medical field today. It's greater than those pills. It's greater than those treatments. It's greater than our own human reasoning, etc. And along with speaking right words, which my new book, Decrees That Heal, is all about. You know, it's filled with prayers of faith that you pray for your loved ones. Because I truly believe that people want to pray in faith. And there are times when people just don't know how to pray. And it's something we aren't really taught from the pulpit. And I think it's so basic, so foundational, but people aren't taught how to pray in faith. And not everything that comes out of our mouth is faith. Not just because you're praying, it doesn't mean you're praying in faith. A lot of what we do is whining and complaining and begging. And when you believe that something is already done, you're not begging for it. You're thanking the Lord for it. And along with speaking right words, which this book is all about, and it's about exposing lies that we are taught to believe that hinder our healing and that. But it also, I teach people all the time, your actions have to line up with your words of faith. You're, if you want to know what's in your heart, because, you know, out of the mouth, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. If you want to know what's really in your heart, what you really believe, look at what you're doing. Mm -hmm. What are you acting out? Because that's what you believe. That's what you truly believe. 
and I teach people all around the world, United States too, I see amazing miracles here. So you can't tell me God is geographical because he's not. He goes wherever there's a believing heart. But I'm telling you, if you are believing for a healing touch to manifest in your body, you cannot be for a funeral. Because if you do, that's what you're going to have. Because that's where you, your, your action is. That's where your faith actions are manifesting in that. So everything has to be in unison. It all has to be aligned mm-hmm. on, on scripture. Not on what you feel, not on what your body, not on those symptoms. Mm-hmm. Of course the enemy is going to ramp up the symptoms against you. He's afraid of you. He's afraid of your healing. Well, Becky, let me ask you for a, a testimony. Uh, uh, share a story with us about uh, healings that you've seen, one that stands out. Well, one of the ones that most people want to hear about is, is how we raised our adopted son, Marcos, from the dead. He came to us when he was one day old. And his mother had tried, his birth mother had tried to abort him numerous times already. So the enemy was after him from the womb. I mean, terribly. And then he came to us at one day old. We named him Marcos. And when he was one month old, he actually died from a lot of the things that happened in his past while he was in that womb. Manifested when he was one month old. And I walked into sudden infant death syndrome, which is a horrible thing. And and it's a huge long story that I don't have time to get into here. But by faith, I mean, my I, I, I walked in and I knew something was wrong in that room. And, and it was like, I, I felt it the moment I walked into the room. And it was like, and I called my husband. I said, David, come here right now. And he came really fast. I said, something's wrong with Marcos. And, and I'm telling you, um, within, within three minutes, he was gone. I couldn't leave. And I'm glad I couldn't leave, but it didn't make sense at the time. But I couldn't leave because I had four other babies and I had 12 kids from the streets. Um, I, I, I couldn't leave the home. And there weren't cell phones. Cell phones had just come into Guatemala. I mean, they were brand new. We owned one. So there was no communication between my husband and I. I, it was a terrible hour. It was rush hour. There's only two ways in and out of Guatemala City. We live 45 minutes outside of the city. What does someone need when they're not breathing? Because that's what was going on. He was not breathing. What do you need? You need oxygen. And and it's a big, long story. But the, the Lord had me in my house. I had no idea if he went and tried to make it down, you know, I it would be like two hours for him to get through that traffic once he got down that mountain to that hospital, or he would have to go the other way into a little Latin town that can, they're very ill-equipped with, with things like that. And so he had no choice, so he went to the little Latin town. And I'm telling you, the first hospital had no oxygen. The, he directed my husband, there's no signs, it's just total confusion. And he directed my husband to go find this place. They found this place. They saw Marcos, grabbed him, and ran up the stairs. My husband's going after him. They made a little makeshift oxygen tank, and they were using one of those handheld um, pumps to to get him to breathe. But too much time had elapsed, and and his lungs had built, his heart had built up so much pressure from pumping dry that his heart didn't stop, it exploded, and his lungs exploded into little pieces, came up out of his nose with all his blood, his heart was exploded, and he was pronounced dead. I didn't know this. I was at the children's home, and as soon as Marcos left the door, we all prayed, and I told all those kids, you behave yourself. Mom's going in her room, and she's praying, and I prayed in, the, and I prayed in tongues. It's just one of the greatest gifts people need the body of Christ needs to reactivate. You need to pray in tongues, people, because we don't always know how to pray. and But the Holy Spirit does, and he'll pray right through us. And I'm praying in tongues, and I'm praying and praying and praying, and then all of a sudden I break into his realm. And that's one of the keys you got to get to. you got to get into the realm of him. 
doubt, words of doubt and unbelief and, 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 and moaning and groaning and all that kind of stuff, you know, negative words is not going to get you into God's presence where the miraculous reigns. You've got to force yourself into his realm, into even in the midst of very difficult situations. You can do it. You can do all things through Jesus, right, who strengthens you. Amen. And so I'm praying in tongues, and then the Holy... And, and then the Spirit of God just broke in, and he called me by name audibly, and he said, Becky. And I looked up, and I said, what? And I'm telling you, I wasn't afraid. I wasn't like, who's talking to me? No. I knew exactly who was speaking to me, and you will too. And, and, and I said, what? And he said, you need to come against the Spirit of death over Marcos right now. And so I heard myself say, in Jesus' name, I renounce the spirit of death over Marcos, and I release the spirit of life to flow into him. And then God spoke to me again audibly, and he said, now, Becky, speak to his spirit directly. Mm. Now, I had been studying healing. I was on assignment by Holy Spirit. I'd been studying healing for two years. I was going on all these long fasts, just feasting on the word of God concerning healing. I was just following the direction of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. and... And he told me, he said, speak to his spirit directly. No one had taught me that. I never read it in anybody's book, nothing, except in the word of God, where Jesus sent his word and it healed them. Yeah. And so, you know, if we will believe the word of God and mm -hmm. activate our faith with no doubts and our actions line up, our words line up, it's all lining up and we're in his presence. And I should add, Love fuels your faith. And so the enemy is going to try and get you out of that realm of love. He's going to try hard to do that. and But you got to stay in it. Mm -hmm. And and I heard myself say, under the leading of the Holy Spirit, speak to his spirit directly. And I said, Marcos, and I had no idea he had been pronounced dead already. I had no idea what was going on. Mm -hmm. All I know is, I said, Marcos, I know there's a distance between us, but in the spirit realm, there is no distance. Marcos, I need you to start breathing on your own now. Breathe, breathe, breathe. And I had this peace, and it's not an emotion. It's not a feeling. It is, I believe, an actual supernatural place with God. It is, you're in his presence. You're in, you're, you're like under the shadow of, of, of his wing. You're right there. And that's where all the miracles, they just, they just permeate the place. And you've got to get yourself into his manifested presence. And you can do it. And you speak the right words of faith. And you act on those faith, on that faith. And I had this peace. And later on, a few hours later, my husband came to get me. And he was telling me his story, which I shared with you. And, and then I'm... And then I started to tell him what I shared just with you now. And no one was with Marcos. They had walked my husband over someplace else to, to sign the paper so the coroner could come and do his business. But this woman was praying in faith. She was praying in the spirit. And God said, this is what you do. This is what you do. And... And all of a sudden, nobody's with Marcos. Nobody's trying to save his life. He'd already been pronounced dead. His blood is just coming out of him. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, Marcos takes this big, deep breath. <gasps> and this is a big, huge room they're in. And everybody stops what they're doing. And they're like going, what? What? And they go running to Marcos. We have to believe for a new heart, new lungs, new kidneys, a new brain, and many other things. Those are just the main things we had to believe for. And a month later, Marcos was now down to four pounds, and we were taking him home. Wow. He is 22 years old. Wow. They and said he'd never walk, sense. talk, speak, any of that. They said he'd shake and tremble, and, and nope. He walks, he's bilingual. I mean, he talks, he's bilingual. He, he's very strong. There's no shaking, trembling. He doesn't have seizures, not any of that. 
Amen. Amen. So I firmly believe that God is all powerful. His word is truth. And there isn't anyone that's going to talk me out of it. <laughs> that's right. Well, Becky, thank you so much for every moment of that story. I know we were all hanging on to hear the, the miracle and just God's word works. But thank you for being a part of our hope today. Amen. Thank you for having me. Amen. I enjoyed it. Wow, what wow. an encounter with the Holy Spirit. All I have to say is, who do we need to invite? Because she was not a believer and invited to a concert or yeah. a Jesus gathering. God supernaturally really touches her and look how God is using her in the kingdom now. Well, and, and I think what we can all take from this is that God is an amazing miracle working God and that yes. we need to be about his business and we need to pray and we need mm -hmm. to believe and we need to trust and we need to be ones that say, God, I know that you can do miracles beyond all that I could ask or think. That's what he encourages us to understand. So let's believe for that. I know, uh, Amanda, there's been times we've prayed, I've prayed, you've prayed, our families have prayed and we haven't seen that but we still need to pray every time, believing that yes. God is going to lead us and guide us. I thank Becky for that, that encouragement by that story. Amen, and I tell you, her book is just full of those prayers, as she said, and it's just not vain words. She has scripture references in every prayer so that you know where it is that you're pulling from God's word. And I encourage you to hang out with God. You know, it's so important that you get to know his word, to understand his character, because when we go to him in prayer, it gives us the right uh, position that we can have before him. And even getting to know his heart, as Becky said, God wills to heal. He desires to touch your life and those of your loved ones. And he wants to strengthen us. But we know that it is not by might, it's not by power, but it is only by the Spirit of God, just the way that Cornerstone Television exists. This is a miracle and God wants us to walk in his miracle power every day. So have hope as you tune into God and understand him more. On tomorrow's Hope Today, ever wonder if God is trying to speak to you through your dreams? Prophetic leader DeMonte Edmonds helps you to discern how dreams from God can awaken and activate a greater potential of His purpose for our lives. That's tomorrow on Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.